The function realloc is used to reallocate the existing dynamic memory by preserving the existing values with some new size. That means if we have already allocated some dynamic memory using the malloc or calloc function call and we need to reallocate it uh, or say we need to grow it to some new size or we need to shrink it then we can do that just by using the realloc function call. The magnificent side of the realloc function is that it retains the existing content of the allocated space intact in the new allocation. So we can just go and call the realloc in order to grow the size without hampering the existing content. On successful reallocation, the realloc function returns the base address. Uh, otherwise, if it fails, then it returns null. Now, it may have failed to find contiguous additional space that we will be requesting. Then it actually moves the existing block to the newly allocated location where it finds the necessary space to keep the existing as well as the additional size. And it returns the base address of the new location as well. So always it's going to return the base address of the allocated space and that's as void pointer. Otherwise it fails, then it returns null. So this is the same program that we used with the malloc and calloc tutorial where I have allocated some space dynamically using the malloc call. Here it is the malloc call. And then we have taken some value from the keyboard and then we printed the values back to the console. The memory was allocated dynamically. And then ultimately we freed the memory using the free function call. Now here I'm just using the realloc function in order to grow the size with the existing content. Say we need to increase the size by three elements. So the new number for the number of elements is n plus three. n was the existing number of elements. So the new number of elements is n plus three. And the realloc syntax is this. First of all, as the first parameter, we need to supply the existing base address. That means where the existing allocation is. And that is kept here in our example in the pointer P. So I'm supplying P as the first parameter. So P is the current base, base address. And second is the new size. So new number multiplied with size of integer. So this is the new size of memory that we need. Okay, now on failure, the realloc may also return null so we need to check that in order to handle the exceptional situation so that the program doesn't crash in runtime and we are exiting in that case so that will handle the runtime exceptional situation if memory allocation fails in runtime then the program aborts there otherwise i'm just assigning some value to the newly allocated locations uh, to those three locations that we have allocated currently with the realloc and here we go the first one is actually the p plus n that's the first location allocated I'm assigning 10 there second one is n plus 1 I'm assigning oops, 20 there and for the third one let me just copy that okay n plus 2 and that's 30 we have added three locations with n so n plus 0 n plus 1 and n plus 2 these are the three new locations now let me just print the content of the new array so that we understand that existing values were kept intact and new values are added successfully so i'm writing the same for loop here once more so here less than n is not appropriate it should be new number because new number is the new number of elements so here I'm writing new content of array okay so let's go ahead and run this program and see how it works so here you can see that it's asking for the number of integers so five elements are allocated using the malloc call. I'm supplying say five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are the five values that are kept in the dynamic location. And then you can see that it's the first for loop that is printing the five values and then the value and then the reallocation takes place where these three values were, were added with the existing content. And you can see that the existing contents are preserved. 